Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of my new favorite mini PCs. Actually, this is a nano PC, as Lenovo's calling it. This is the Think Center M92N. Now, they do make a few different models of this, and as you can see, I mean, this thing is absolutely tiny. This packs an 8th gen i5 CPU, 8 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigabytes of storage. They offer a few different configurations of this. One comes with an i3, the one I have has the i5, and they also have the i7. You can get anywhere from 4 gigs of RAM up to 16. I opted for the mid-range here with the i5, and I picked this up refurbished on eBay for $325. But recently, I have seen this on Lenovo's website for $399. They also have the i3 for $299, and I didn't even look at the i7 because I know it's going to be way overpriced. So along with the unit, I actually got a few accessories here. As you can see, it did come with a keyboard, and to my surprise, this is a wireless keyboard. It also came with a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter, our Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna, and a 65 watt power supply. Real quick, I just wanted to give you an idea of the size of this unit here. It's coming in at 0.35 liters. Here's a comparison between the Raspberry Pi 4 and this little mini PC. I also threw in the wireless mouse and an Xbox One controller, or the Xbox Series S controller. At 0.35 liters, this thing is tiny. When it comes to I.O., I think they've packed a lot into this small form factor. On the front here, we have a USB Type-C connector. This will do video out. It's not Thunderbolt or anything like that. We also have two USB 3.1 ports and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the front. On each side, we do have a little bit of ventilation, not much going on here, but when we move around back, we have our power input, full-size display port, two more USB 3.1 ports, another USB Type-C port, and gigabit Ethernet. And when it comes to the specs, it's actually a pretty powerful little unit, given I did pick up the i5 version. For the CPU, we have the Intel i5-8365U, four cores, eight threads, base clock of 1.6, with a boost up to 4.1. The GPU is the built-in Intel UHD 620 graphics. We have 8 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2400 megahertz, a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, 802.11ac Wi-Fi plus gigabit Ethernet and Bluetooth 5.0. And this does come preloaded with Windows 10 Home 64-bit. So before we get into testing, I did want to pull the bottom off here and just take a look at the internals. Really easy, single screw, slides right off. The bottom panel here does have a little thermal pad to keep that M.2 cool, and this one did come pre-installed with a 512GB M.2, but we have an extra slot so we can add another one, and in total you can actually add two 1TB M.2s in this unit, bringing the total storage up to 2TB in this tiny PC. Unfortunately, the RAM is non-user upgradable. It is soldered to the board, so you're going to be stuck with what you got. I opted for the 8GB model, but you can get this up to 16. You might be able to get a 32 model, but I'm not sure. So yeah, I'm super excited to get into some testing. Like I mentioned, it's running Windows 10 Home 64-bit. In this video, we're going to test out some web browsing, 4K video playback, I'll run some benchmarks, we'll test some gaming, and some emulation. So with all that out of the way, let's jump right to the testing. Okay, so I've got everything booted up, got a lot of stuff installed to test out. I did go into the BIOS just to see if I could change this to a high performance setting, because usually Lenovo units like this do have a high performance setting in the BIOS, but unfortunately this one doesn't. The only real thing that I can change are the C states and the fan itself. We can go to silent, full blast, or kind of a medium setting, and that's exactly what I have here. While it's idling, while I'm doing 4K video, web browsing, and things like that, I can't hear the unit whatsoever. If I start up a game, it does ramp up a bit, but it's not super duper loud. I'm sure when it hits that thermal threshold, this thing will kick on pretty loud, but under normal use, you won't hear this unit. So as you can see, we have the i5-8365U, base clock 1.6 GHz, it does boost up to 4.1. 8 gigs of DDR4, running at 2400 MHz, and it is dual channel, set up right out of the box. And the UHD 620 graphics. So usability on this is great. I mean, if you want to use this as a little work machine or even just a little play machine, it is awesome. I love the form factor of this thing. And performance with this i5 is really great for the form factor. Web browsing, super smooth. We'll just head over to Lenovo's website. As you can see, everything loads up super quick here. We'll just go to a random laptop. And yeah. I mean, it's already fully loaded out. I can scroll through. Web browsing, no issue whatsoever. 4K video playback. Let's check this out. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. Make sure we are set to 4K here. 
And there we are, two drop frames on the initial load in, something you'll never notice with the naked eye. Skip ahead a bit. 4K and even 5K video playback on this is great. So we'll go to 5K, at least streaming. And once I reset that after everything's loaded up, we're not dropping any more frames here. Skip ahead just a bit more, and then we'll move over to Plex. So yeah, if you wanted to use a mini PC like this for 4K media consumption, you'll have no issues. I mean, streaming from Amazon Prime, Hulu, Netflix, and even YouTube, as you can see. We can even do 5K here. Moving over to Plex. 4K, 60 FPS, 60 megabytes per second. We're going to start from the beginning here, and I'm pretty sure we won't have any issues with this one. Definitely looks good to me. I'm not noticing any skips or anything like that. It's super smooth and it looks great. So yeah, streaming 4K content from Plex is totally possible with this unit here. Next up, got a few benchmarks. Here's Geekbench 5, single core, 1061, multi, 2991. Not the greatest, but pretty good for the form factor of this unit. Moving over to a GPU benchmark, 3D Mark, Night Raid, total score, 5,114. And finally, Cinebench R20, 1149. It did beat out that i5-3550, and I suspected it would. I mean, that's a third gen we're working with an 8 here, even though that third gen is a desktop class processor. Now it's time to move over to some PC gaming. Up in the top left hand corner I do have Afterburner running so we can check out what's going on with the PC at any given time. And in the lower left hand corner we have the name of the game and settings used per game. Obviously we have Overwatch, 720p, low settings. By the end of my run here I was averaging 56 FPS. Next up, Rocket League, 720p, low settings, by the end of this one here, 53 FPS. CSGO, 720p, low settings, 72 FPS on average. Here's Fortnite because I always get asked about it with these small PCs. 720p, low settings, we got an average of 48 FPS by the end of this. It wasn't great performance. But if you don't mind playing at 30 FPS on something like this, you can lock it there and it would stay there all day long. And finally, Minecraft Dungeons. Now, believe it or not, it wouldn't run this at 60 FPS. 720p, low settings. I had to lock it at 30 to get a stable frame rate out of it. Going into this, I actually thought we wouldn't have an issue with this game, but it seems like with that built-in UHD 620, it's not enough to push this game to 60 FPS. I also wanted to throw a little bit of cloud streaming in here, so we have Stadia with Cyberpunk 2077, and yes, this little machine's gonna run it. I mean, you can run this on a low-end Android phone as long as you have the game for Stadia and Stadia loaded up. But yeah, I mean, it does work good. I do have it set to high frame rate in the Stadia settings, and I'd say it is fully playable on this machine using Stadia.
Moving over to a little bit of emulation. Now, if you're really interested in it, I can do a full emulation video on this machine here. But first up, we have GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, Automotalista, a harder one to run. We're able to take this up to 1080p. I am using the Vulcan back end here, but we're getting a constant 60 out of it. So GameCube really isn't going to be an issue with this machine here, even at 1080p. And when it comes to Wii games using the same emulator, 1080p, we have Sonic Colors. It's running great. Every once in a while, I did notice a frame dip down to 28 FPS. And by the way, this game did run at 30 FPS on original hardware. I'd say this is also playable. And if you don't want those dips, just take it down a little bit to 720. Next up, we have 3DS using the Citra emulator, Mario Kart 7. And it does run these games really well at 1x resolution. So we're at the native resolution. But as you can see, when you have this full screen, I mean, it's not a super clear image. I was hoping we could go up to at least 2x with this because it does look a lot better. But running 3DS games with Citra using the OpenGL back end works pretty decently. And finally, we have PS2 with Ratchet and Clank. I'm using PC SX2. I'm using the DirectX 11 backend because OpenGL just wouldn't handle this one here. This one's a bit harder to run and that's why I wanted to throw it in here. And overall, it's trying its hardest, but every once in a while I do notice it dip down to the 40s. Now when I test these mini PCs, I also like to test power consumption from the wall. I use a kilowatt meter. This thing's plugged in. This is total system power consumption from the wall. At idle, 6.4 watts. 4K video playback, I did see it spike up to 9.6. 720p gaming, 26.3. And the maximum that I could pull out of this unit while running Cinebench R20 and 3D Mark Time Spy at the same time was 38.7 watts. And when it comes to CPU temperature on this unit, it's much better than I thought it would be. And like I mentioned at the beginning, unless you're gaming or really hitting the CPU at 100%, you're not going to hear that fan at all. At idle, 44 degrees Celsius. 4K video playback jumped up to 51. 720p gaming on average, 63. And the maximum was 84. That's that thermal threshold. They have it set there. It'll clock itself down to cool off. And that was the same test I ran with the power consumption. 3D Mark Time Spy and Cinebench R20 at the same time. So you'll never see temps like this. All in all, I'm really impressed with the Lenovo ThinkCenter M90N. They make this with an i3, an i5, which I have here, and they also have an i7 version. I was able to pick this up on eBay, refurbished for $325, but I've seen them for $429 new on Amazon. And recently, Lenovo was running their big holiday sale. The i3 version was going for $299, and the i5 version, which I have here, was actually going for $399. So $400 for a small form factor PC like this. I think is a decent deal if you have a use case scenario for it. I wouldn't go out and pick one of these up specifically for gaming or emulation, but if you do need a new small form factor desktop, this is definitely one to take a look at. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in seeing a full emulation test on this little PC, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.